Today's Gospel reading is from Matthew 17, verses 1 through 9. Peter, James, and John witnessed the transfiguration of Jesus. And after six days, Jesus took Peter and James and John his brother and led them up a high mountain apart. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became brilliant as light. And there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Sovereign, it is well that we are here. If you wish, I will make three booths here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Peter was still speaking when a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved child, with whom I am well pleased. To this one you shall listen. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. <coughs> and as they were coming the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the human one is raised from the dead. May God add understanding to this reading of the gospel. Amen. God, I thank you and praise you that once again you have called me to be your instrument. I ask that you anoint my heart and anoint my lips. Remove me from myself, from all fears, concerns, and anxieties, and replace it with the movement of your Holy Spirit. And I ask, O oh God, that you pour out your Spirit upon those who would hear, to hear this message this day, that they would hear for themselves what they need on their faith journey. Amen. The episode of the Transfiguration did something not only for Jesus, but for the disciples also. First, the minds of the disciples must have been still hurt and bewildered by the insistence of Jesus that he must go to Jerusalem to suffer and to die. It must have looked to them as if there was nothing but dark shame ahead. But start to finish, the whole atmosphere of the mountain of transfiguration is glory. Jesus' face shone like the sun, and his garments glistened and gleamed like the light. The Jews well knew the promise of God to the victorious righteous. Their face shall shine as the sun. No Jew could ever have seen the luminous cloud without thinking of the glory of God resting upon the people. There's one very revealing little touch to this passage. No fewer than three times in its eight brief verses, there occurs the little interjection, Behold, look you, it is as if Matthew could not even tell the story without a catch of the breath at the, at the sheer staggering wonder of it all. Here surely was something which would lift up the hearts of the disciples and enable them to see the glory through the shame, the triumph through the humiliation, the crown beyond the cross. It is obvious that even yet they did not understand. But it must surely have given, given them some little glimmering that the cross was not all humiliation, but somehow, that somehow it was tinged with glory, that somehow glory was the very atmosphere of the exodus to Jerusalem and to death. Second, Peter must have learned two lessons that night. When Peter woke to what was going on, his first reaction was to build three tabernacles or tables, one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was always a man of action, 
always the man who must be doing something. There is a time for stillness, a time for contemplation, for wonder, for adoration, for awed reverence in the presence of the supreme glory. Be still and know that I am God. It may be that sometimes we are too busy trying to do something when we would be better to be silent, to be listening, to be wondering, to be adoring in the presence of God. Before a person can fight and adventure upon their feet, they must first wonder and pray. The third, there is a converse of that. It is quite clear that Peter wished to wait upon the mountain slopes. He wished the great moment that he was in would be prolonged. He did not want to go down to the everyday and common things again, but to remain forever in the sheen of glory. That's a feeling we all know. There are moments of intimacy, of serenity, of peace, and of nearness to God, which everyone has known and wished to prolong. H. Michael McNeil has said, the mountain of transfiguration is always more enjoyable than the daily ministry or the way of the cross. In the next few weeks here at Spirit of Peace, as we journey through the Lenten season, we will learn and discuss these truths. If we are to find the crown of the glory of the resurrection on Easter, we must leave the comfort of the mountain of transfiguration and follow the journey to the cross. Now I have been told, I am not sharing this with you out of personal experience, trust me, that if you wish to win the marathon, you must complete even that last mile. Leaving the race before the final mile is run is not a winning or glorious moment for eternity. We are called as a people of God to leave the place of peace, contemplation, and awe. Not, not so that we can suffer. We must leave these things so as to bring the promise of the grace and the glory of the resurrection of all that we meet. Each week during Lent, we will gather on Wednesday evenings to share in a very old tradition of something called the Way of the Cross, or the Stations of the Cross. The importance of this discipline is to meditate and pray about the walk that Jesus made alone, on his own, to complete that last mile before the cross. Our series will be very different in that we will be sharing the basic story of the journey and then instead of just sitting in contemplation and meditation and prayer, we will have the opportunity to put ourselves in the journey and to answer questions for ourselves of how we have been in some of these same circumstances as the last mile to the cross. The mountain of the transfiguration is given to us only to provide strength for the daily ministry and to enable us to walk the way of the cross. Susanna Wesley had a prayer Help me, Lord, to remember that religion is not to be confined to the church or the closet, not exercised only in prayer and meditation, but that everywhere I am in thy presence. The moment of glory does not exist for its own sake. 
that exists to clothe the common things with the radiance they never had before. Now is the time in our town, in Fayetteville, where we see LGBT rights protections stripped away. In our society, where we see children not being able to get the right education. In our society, where we don't know who to believe anymore. Who's the enemy of the people? In our world, a world of uncertainty, a world of fear. Now is the time for that radiance to be seen more than ever before. Amen. Amen.